Howdy, y'all. Welcome to the Beverly Hillbillies Facts and Trivia. Y'all kick off the shoes and you set a spell, all right? Now here's your host for the show, that old Kentucky boy himself, Mr. Bob Snap. Hi, uh, guys. Welcome to the Beverly Hillbillies Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Um, Today's video is on, uh, do you remember the return of the Beverly Hillbillies, uh, the really, really bad TV movie? Um, well, this is the actors and the creator of the Beverly Hillbillies. This is their reaction to that movie. Uh, this is pretty neat, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Let's take a look. I take full responsibility for the failure of the return of the Beverly Hillbillies, says his creator. It was a bad script, and I knew it was a bad script, and when it came time to rewrite it, the Writers Guild went on strike. I was helpless between a rock and a hard place, as a hillbilly would say. Uh, once again, Buddy Epson applied a mustache and dusted off the torn hat and tan jacket to spout wheel doggies for the fans. And Donna Douglas fit right back into that rope-tied jeans to hug them critters. Uh, the cast also included Imogene Coca as Granny's 104-year-old mall, Werner Klemperer, who starred in Hogan's Heroes in the, as an inept German Colonel Klink, played C.D. Medford, a government bureaucrat who almost marries Jane Hathaway. Actor Ray Young, who at a distance looked similar to Max Baer, uh, filled in for Jethro. Linda K. Henning uh, played the role of Jethro Bodine's secretary at the motion picture studio. We missed Granny terribly, said Chad Heller, and Max was a loss, too. He originally said yes to Paul when he was approached about the part. He kept saying yes, but when it got close to filming, Paul could not get a hold of Max. He was dodging Paul. Finally, Paul sent someone to see Max, and Max refused to part at the last minute. So they found this other guy who looked a little like Jethro, but wasn't a seasoned actor. He did what he could. Uh, Bear later explained, I was 20 years older. I don't think it would have worked for me. Bear tried to shy away from his identification with the role that most viewers and unfortunately most casting directors, directors had. I felt trapped in that part uh, from the beginning. I felt that way when I first did it, just like Archie Bunker's Carol O'Connor will always be Archie Bunker. Bear was not the only original cast member to feel the, the, the difference. The, 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 the difference. Uh, it was... <laughs> It wasn't the same, Nancy Culp said. At first, I fought the idea of doing the movie. Finally, Paul uh, called and wanted to meet with me. Uh, it was like a scene out of The Godfather. It was pouring rain on a really dark day, and I remember Paul and I getting together, both of us holding up umbrellas. He pleaded with me, I'd really like you to be in this movie, Nancy. It was very difficult, Culp said. I never thought Imogene Coca was good casting, but they did, and I wasn't going to say anything. Director Bob Leeds used the idiotic shots, many over-the-shoulder shots that don't lend themselves to comedy. It was atrocious, but I must say it was good to get back together with some of the people from the show. I just wish it would have turned out better. That's all. I wish it had turned out a whole lot better. Uh, as I said, uh, the Andy Griffith show did return to Mayberry, and I didn't think that was written well at all either, but it was really neat seeing the cast it back together and and it it was it was neat enough to where it made it okay uh not this one i'm sorry it just didn't didn't work uh especially with imogene coca i mm, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this please don't forget about classic tv facts and trivia and classic rock and country music facts and trivia i could really use your help over there guys come on over and check them out let me know what you think uh viewership's gone way down over there and I need to boost it up. So help me out. Um, have a great day. Uh, God bless you. And I'll be praying for you.